So let's look at sensor networking and what is LoRaWAN. So LoRaWAN is really a, it's, it's, a, it's a new technology that is coming to the market. It's been here for a few years, but we really see an acceleration. And what it is, it's really uh, to be able to do the gap between uh, cellular and wireless uh, technology. You know, when you have Wi-Fi today, you have a limited reach that you can get with Wi-Fi. When you get cellular, you can go much further. But the key is cellular will consume the battery. And uh, really, when you look at LTE and so on, it's, it's, it's more uh, power consuming than, uh, than other technology. So the advantage of LoRa is very low power, low bandwidth. So we are talking about 0.3 uh, kbps to 50 kbps, so very, very uh, small bandwidth. But it's very low battery, uh, low power consumption. So which means you can have a sensor with a battery, and the sensor can last for several years. And the distance that you can get with this technology is up to uh, 10 kilometers uh, in, 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 uh, in plain sight, I would say, or in, in uh, outdoor deployment, which means that if you want to connect sensor and con sense things on the field, you can put one antenna and be able to collect all this information. So that's what we do, and it's really interesting because it's opening a bunch of different use cases. And I have a few here from water and gas metering to location tra tracking to leak detection and so on. People can retrofit their equipment, their asset in the field with a battery powered sensor and they can get the information. So for example, uh, I was talking to a customer uh, yesterday. They have like dam, uh, you know, water dam, and they can retrofit those dam and be able to send the information without AV installation because once again, it's just a sensor with a small battery. Uh, so we see a lot of different use cases and what Cisco has done, and I have a more use case on this one, you see, for example, from smart parking to smart building, uh, public lighting, asset tracking, and so on, waste management. So pretty much you can think of anything that you find in real life where you can sense. Now you can put a sensor that is very cheap. That's gonna, the battery is going to last forever, I mean, 10 years, and you can get information. Is the trash full? Is the trash empty? Do I need to service it? And so on. I've heard some of the bands in 5G are intended to handle this sort of a use yeah. as well. Is this? Yeah, so, so that's a very good point that I missed to mention, is this technology is on the ISM band, so it's, it's unrestricted which means uh, you don't need to be a service provider to be able to deploy this technology. On uh, cellular, so on the LTE side, there is a new standard that is coming. It's going to be NB-IoT. But NB-IoT is more far along. And NB-IoT will require that you have spectrum to be able to be deployed, as far as I know. Okay? So that's a really the different use case, so which means that a lot of our customers that today don't have spectrum can still use this technology to do some sensing. So what do we do in terms of Cisco solution? So what we do is we have a new, what we call a lower one gateway that you can connect to, or, uh, for example, IR809. And this gateway is PoE powered and collects the information from the sensor. We can backhaul through IP to the data center where you're going to have an application server. So once again, we have a demo available on, on the world of solution. And that really allows you to, uh, we have different types of sensor, for example, parking. Uh, when, you, when you put your hand on the, on the parking sensor, you can see that the space is occupied or the space is free. And really what's descriptive about it is really, uh, because it's low bandwidth, it's really low power, that's the description. Meaning you can now just put a battery where before it would have been much more expensive to go and change battery and, and so on. Okay? So I put a picture, for example, of the deployment that we have. And uh, what you see here is, so typically, typically it's, a, it's a RF technology, so it for rooftop installation. The other thing that we are doing is this technology is capable of doing geolocalization without a GPS. So meaning if you have several antenna, you can do time differential and with one sensor emitting a beacon, you can, you can uh, triangulate and find the location of the sensor without having the sensor having a GPS chips. So the accuracy is not as good as what you get with GPS, but in some of the use cases that already tells you is a truck in that space or why is the truck uh, located, okay? Any question? Am I going too fast? Have you seen the line uh, of sight? Uh, oh no, it's, it's RF, so actually you, it doesn't have to be line of sight, but if you have, for example, indoor, you will have less coverage, right? So you need to put more antenna. So for example, we have one on the wall of solution, and I know when we go down two floors and at the end of the corner, we, 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 we don't really have coverage, so we need another antenna. But if you are in countryside, then you will have very long distance, right? So typically in, in um, in countryside, you will say easily 10 kilometers. Uh, in urban environment, depending on the building and so on, you can have like maybe two kilometers. I mean, it really depends, right? So we need to do proper RF planning to be able to deploy the technology.